Hello everyone, welcome to this new episode of the Gemini version 2 pen test challenge. We've been able to find a remote code execution on the PHP session ID and now it's time to get a remote access to the vulnerable server. Let's get started. So remember, we've started with nothing. We've enumerated the application and found some entry points using directory brute force mainly the registration feature that allowed us to create a new account, the validation or activation feature that allowed us to activate the user account using a anti-CSERF bypass as well as a brute force of the six digit number. And once we've uh, landed on the profiles or the user's profile, we were able to analyze the export profile feature and that's how we found a command injection vulnerability in the PHP session cookie. So how can we do, uh, we can leverage this to gain a remote code execution on the server. In the previous uh, challenge, Gem Gemini version one, we were able to find the uh, ID RSA or the private key used to SSH into the server. I wonder if it's the same here. Uh, let me list it recursively of the home directory and let's put that into a file called please subscribe and then we want to add another command so that would be a semicolon that we need to encode and then use uh, wget with the uh, upload file, I guess. The upload file allows you to upload a file in the post data. And we want to point that please subscribe file and send it to our collaborator server. So that would be, let's copy that URL or host name and paste it right here. Before running the command, I'm just going to validate if uh, we indeed have the this option in wget. So wget dash dash help and grep the option upload. Nope. It's not that, okay. Convert file. Yeah, so the correct option is actually post file. Okay, let's paste it right here and send. Hopefully this would give us the content of the result of this command right into our collaborator. It's taken some time to respond, which is a good indicator because remember, we suspect that the server is actually evaluating our injected payload. If everything goes well, yes, we see the collaborator lights up. And actually, let me sort by reverse order so that we have the recent requests at the top. And if we click on it, on that, the request actually contains the results of our command. Look at that. That's wonderful. And we didn't have to have any reverse shell. Okay, so we have the Gemini 1 user account, which has no SSH folder. We have a search history here. I wonder what's the content of that search history file. Oh yeah, it's under nano. Okay, so it's a legitimate file. We had a Redis CLI history, which has just one byte, so it's not really interesting. Okay, can we like create a folder .ssh and then put in our own key and see if we can SSH into it. That would be promising, wouldn't it? 
So let's do that real quick. So I am in Gemini pen test 2. I'm going to use key gen. Um, actually, it's SSH key gen. And then RSA as the type. And then we want to name it Gemini 2. And here we have our Gemini private key with its corresponding public key. We want to change its um, permissions. We want to cat the content of the Gemini.2 pub and take that and put it into our payload. So what we want is actually replace all this with our injected commands. So the first thing we need to do is uh, create a new folder, make dir. So we had the uh, Gemini one home directory. Under that, we need to create a .ssh. And then we want to actually add a new command. So we encode the semicolon and then echo we want to echo that string, which is nothing but our public key, and put it into the home gemini.ssh. And then the file called authorized keys. Make sure that you don't do any typos. Authorized keys, that sounds good. And just to notify our server or to notify us that the attack has finished, we want to add another command, which is nothing but wget and then paste in the collaborator hostname. Copy to clipboard and paste it here. Now, because this might include some special characters that are going to be interpreted by HTTP, we want to just take that content of our public key and then encode it. Perfect. Let's send that. And it's taking some time, which is a good thing. So just to recap, we make a directory under the Gemini one user called .ssh. And inside that, we create a file called authorized keys which contains nothing but the public key of our um, RSA private key. So that's what we are going to use in order to log in using SSH. Do we have anything? Yeah, so we've received a callback, which means that potentially, if everything goes well, we could do something like SSH using that Gemini to private key and log in as Gemini1 to ctf03.rootme.org. Yes. Oh, it's asking for a password, which means that the public key doesn't, didn't really work. Okay, we can try to troubleshoot that using dash VVV. So next authentication method, password, receive packet type 51. Okay. So this means that it doesn't, it didn't, didn't take our uh, public key into consideration. I wonder if this is related to the uh, configuration of this SSH server. I'm not really sure. You know what? What would be easier is to get a reverse shell. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. So make sure to subscribe and hit that ring bell to receive the video as soon as I upload it. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.